in this dairy and food process and products technology our course uh, title uh, as and when uh, i am coming and saying that uh, if it is possible for us to encompass as much as we can because th though there is no preamble for this course but uh, definitely some kind of knowledge in uh, chemistry food chemistry these things are also required right we, i said that engineering i uh, the other day i said if you are interested already we have done on uh, momentum transfer so you can uh, also um, uh, take that course or uh, register yourself then uh, future also many such courses will come up which will encompass many of the engineering side but simultaneously like technological or science based uh, topic or subject like this one e that also requires some basic science uh, knowledge like chemistry some physics chemistry and mathematics is always all the time so that is why i think uh, as and when possible whenever things are coming i am trying my best to explain a little bit more or encompass a little bit more such that uh, you can easily understand easily correlate easily uh, e easily easily uh, rather uh, express yourself in that way so here also we will do similar things like that now we are in the uh, milk constitution uh, constituents right earlier we have seen what uh, happens what is the taste what is the color uh, what happens when acidification is made etc some of the things which we have done now uh, let us go into the det uh, further detail of the constituents of milk right so that is our headline today that constituents of milk this uh, on lecture 19 will do right you uh, we have said uh, in the previous class that depending on the source depending on the uh, depending on the species you are considering it may have wide variation of the uh, constituents like the basic constituents which are the basic of the nutrients that uh, water fat protein carbohydrate vitamins minerals all these are constituents of any food product it is not that all the time and now since we are talking about milk it is not necessarily that uh, we will talk about milk only and uh, other food products if we come across we will keep it aside so that is why when in general we are saying so these all constituents are the basic constituents of any food it may be somewhere one of the or some of the constituents are predominant somewhere others are very nominal or negligible or maybe very very I, i don't say that it is absolutely zero but very very insignificant in quantity so in that case uh, whenever we are coming into all of them we'll definitely try to explain some more chemistry associated with them right this i think it is better we do it otherwise uh, understanding because some of the chemistries are also required i am not saying that chemical formulae or chemical reactions understanding of the chemistry basic chemistry also required right like if i uh, tell you that uh, glycerol glycerol is what try to recapitulate glycerol is yes you are right trihydroxy alcohol 
right trihydroxy alcohol that means there are three hydroxyl groups not only that and these three hydroxyl groups are connected to three carbons right that is why glycerol is a three carbon member so like this if some basic things come up as and when we'll try to uh, encompass we'll try to cover whenever it is possible we'll try to again minimize if there be any repetition but it is very difficult uh, to remember that which one was already told and which one was not so had it been in a same class in a, in a single class then you can remember in all the number of classes it is very difficult to remember which one has already been told a little or in detail and which one not but we will try as much as uh, we can remember and minimize the repetition if there be any hopefully it will not be but okay the, and some of the repetitions are also uh, helpful for you because that gives you recapitulation of the past so it is called brushing up so a little brushing up it happens and that helps in our experiences that helps in uh, memorizing because many things are not possible to memorize but there are some things which heat on your brain or in your uh, so called in colloquial language we call head so that uh, goes to the head and normally you don't forget the basic constituents start with the water hopefully in the last class we started it uh, little and because of the time uh, constraint we could not carry forward and uh, milk it contains between 80 to 90 percent water in general it can be a little bit more or little bit less depending on the species depending on the depending on the places from where etc etc many 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 factors are there right again we said that uh, what are the reasons for this uh, different output of the different uh, mammals what are the different reasons we'll try again sometime once we finish all these constituents and others is activities then we'll go ahead with those also because that is also a thing which is required and perhaps there we'll tell a little bit more about the uh, colostrum which we said the uh, other day that is the basic of the uh, of the on newly born baby uh, which is supplied which who is supplied rather who is supplied with the uh, with the fighting ability with the new environment uh, that is all 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 kinds of all kinds of supporting mechanisms or all kinds of uh, uh, acclimatization uh, me mechanisms to help them some of the things come from there which we'll tell in detail when we go for that colostrum now the basic part is it is with water 80 to 90 percent is water and in that water small quantity of water is also associated with hydration of different salts different proteins different uh, Di, 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 in, a, in a different way, different uh, hydration. This is called binding of uh, water chemically with uh, different molecules like lactose, salt, or protein. All these do have uh, hydration. And hydration, the other day I said, we also said about the water activity. Milk also has a very high water activity around 0.99 more than 0.99 and we said about the water activity the other day right now obviously the higher the water content 
more is the water activity and higher the water activity more is the chance of microbial spoilage or microbes to invade and act on the material whatever it be whether it is milk or whether it is any solid food everywhere it is same right if the moisture content is very high it is susceptible to be or liable to be uh, uh, invaded by microorganisms now which microorganism from where will come that is uh, altogether different and uh, there is not also under this umbrella of uh, or jurisdiction of this course but still when as and when we come across we will definitely tell like typically if we consider milk it is the major where the lactobacillus uh, as the genus right again here i will not go into detail of the microbiology because which is genus which is species etc this if we go on again um, digging into that then no end to that so i presume that at least we understand that lactobacillus is the genus from their different species like genus means is family is a family and like in the family different persons are there as the individual so like that different species are there in that genus and they constitute the whole family genus so this lactobacillus genus is definitely definitely act on the milk and uh, they are very much liking milk as the source it does not mean others do not because milk is a very good source of all the ingredients all the nutrients required for the organisms to grow since it is available so everybody would try to but as we know from the microbiological point of view that uh, typically for bacteria there are basically three types one is thermophilic one is mesophilic and one is psychrophilic so depending on that temperature what is the temperature at which you are keeping organisms will come accordingly also that is also a, a restricting point or, or or some point where you can demarcate so if the water activity is uh, high chances of getting contaminated or spoilage is very high to make it uh most stable normally what you do for any food material you remove the water that is by removal of moisture this is a very good technique which we normally call drying so in this typical for milk it is dried to the powder level where the moisture content is very low much below than water activity level of 0.6 right and we said the other day 0.7 is the datum for uh, for most of the uh, organisms like including mold but exceptions are there that is why if we take 0.6 as the lower side then hopefully if things are below 0.6 what activity then organism uh, growth or or contamination with respect to organisms are minimized or can be avoided right so if that be true then you, this water if that is removed and brought down to the level which is less than 0.6 which is true with milk powder when we are making powder from milk normally this milk powder is done with spray drying and uh, this spray dried milk powder contains around 2.53% not more than that moisture right though since it has also sugar that to that to that to lactose so it is also hygroscopic it can absorb from ambient moisture and that uh, you have to take care that is why you will see that i don't know how many times you have seen that whenever uh, this bottles or this the containers from where this uh, dried powder milk is taken the then either mummy or seniors do tell put the lid uh, closed 
the moment it is they normally they don't keep it open for long because by the time it will uh, it will it will it will grab some uh, moisture from the surrounding atmosphere and it will get moisten and local moisture will grow up and that may lead to some contamination right it is not necessarily that in a whole whole uh, container of dried milk that the entire milk has to be um, hydrated or it, it should uh, adhere moisture and increase the moisture level then only organisms will come it is not see if a small portion inside is high, uh, getting uh, mo moisture absorbed and local moisture there it that becomes more than the critical level of the uh, water activity then the organisms can come and grow into that or invent it is not that coming like that we go from here to there it is always all the time everywhere we, do, we, we are not able to see but that is why it is micro and uh, since we are not able to see and since uh, they are coming they are, they can uh, this is called invading so they are invading and they can grow and spoil but normally it is chances are low i don't say rare low because you they then take care of it is not that it comes in atmosphere and all the moisture from the atmosphere goes because here also then it comes to that heat and mass transfer that those concepts right so it is not just like that it goes from moisture and all moisture from the atmosphere goes into the product and spoils that it is not it takes also time that is why after taking it is getting closed right <coughs> 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 sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. Normally, this is one way of extending the life of milk by making it dried product, and milk powder is the best example of that by removal of moisture. So, it is coming under the umbrella of moisture. Another one is definitely very, very useful in uh, from the point of view of the law that you are not allowed to add externally water without the knowledge of the customer if customer says or you are the customer if you know for your consumption if you think that i will dilute it uh, no problem i will concentrate it no problem it is your your baby you can do anything you like but the seller they cannot so it is, it is not recommended that external addition of moisture to the milk is should be there so that is prohibited right by the law now we come to the from the first constituent water the next constituent as fats and lipids right next constituent we come to fats and lipids here i would like to uh, spend some time on fats and lipids what is that right the, perhaps in one of the class i said that all lipids are not fat but all fats are lipids right so lipids are what lipids are insoluble in water but soluble in non polar solvents all lipids are insoluble in water but soluble in non because water is a polar solvent and that is why in milk that fat milk fat is not in solution because it does not go into solution so it is not soluble in water but soluble in non polar solvents like organic solvents they are soluble such as chloroform carbon disulfide benzene hexane ether etc the characteristic solubility of lipids in water is 
in several cases due to the presence in them of one or more fatty acids. This solubility is a function of the presence of one or more fatty acids and in that we will come in detail in that fatty acids which contain long aliphatic hydrocarbon chains. Right. So, depending on how long or how small the chains are solubility also may differ. Right. Obviously, you can imagine that a big fat chain or long chain aliphatic fatty acid if that uh, and uh, when it goes to the solution that means, it has to go into the water uh, and uh, in a way either hydration or some similar things can be done. So, one molecule may not be good enough to 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 hold that entire entire big molecule of the fatty acid. So, that is why it is expected that mole high molecular weight fatty acids or long chain fatty acids their solubility will be much lower than that of the smaller molecular weight or smaller chain fatty acids. Right? Then lipids are widely distributed in nature, they rarely occur in an organism in the free state, but are more usually combined with proteins as lipoproteins or carbohydrates as liposaccharides or glycolipids liposaccharide or it may be also called glycolipids. So, these are they are not available in the free state as the lipid. So, they are always associated with either some protein or carbohydrate. So, depending on that it may be termed as either lipoprotein or glycoprotein all liposaccharide etcetera etcetera right so they are not available in the free state this statement is uh, very very important that they are not available in the free state always associated with others like proteins like carbohydrates they are always associated as lipoprotein or liposaccharide now if we classify lipids it can be classified in two groups uh, one is simple and the other is compound. Obviously, simple is the one where fatty acids fa that is the fats which are esters of fatty acids with glycerol right uh, or waxes glycerols and waxes. So, which are esters of fatty acids with long chain monohydroxy alcohols all other lipids are compound lipids such as phosphoglycerides or phospholipids or phosphatide steroids carotenoids and lipids functioning as vitamins or hormones they are all complex if possible sometime we will also show some maybe one or two uh, this figure which may be very very required right so in that case uh, what i mean to say that uh, those which are uh, glycerides so glycerol so let me open a open a page glycerol or i can use this much this much is good enough that it is ch2 O H C H O H C H 2 O H. So, this is the glycerol right. So, it has three hydroxy five, uh, three hydroxyl groups right one in the top second in the bottom and third in the middle right. So, all these hydroxyl groups if they are ester and we also know that this is the hydroxyl hydroxyl group is what OH group is hydroxyl group and when it is reacting with 
C O O H this is the carboxylic group right. So, when this hydroxylic group and the carboxylic group they are reacting then what happens one molecule of water goes away and there it forms ester. So, ester means through a O right this kind of this kind of reaction happens and when it is happening that time definitely uh, we can call it depending on whether a single hydroxyl group is esterified or two hydroxyl groups are esterified or all three hydroxyl groups are esterified. If it is single hydroxyl group then we call it to be and these are all compounds of glycerol salt uh, compounds of glycerol with the uh, with the acid. So, or esters of the glycerol. So, in that case if it is only one hydroxyl group then we will we call it to be monoglyceride. If it is with the two then we call it to be diglyceride and if it is all with three then we call triglyceride. And you remember in the past class in milk we had said that almost around 98 percent is uh, out of the fats in milk almost around 98 percent of them are in the form of triglycerides right. So, monodi may or may not be there depending on it is I am not talking about milk in general mono or di uh, glycerides may or may not be there, but that also constitutes the fat. So, the fats are when we are getting the hydroxyl groups of the triglycerides esterified with the fatty acid then that becomes the mono or di or tri hydroglyceride right. So, depending on that mono or di or triglycerides we call it to be the glycerides or simple fat simple fats right and we all said that the complex fats are or those which are associated with associated with either very very long chain carboxylic acids or maybe not directly associated may be associated with some other proteins or lipids uh, or proteins or uh, carbohydrates like sterols, then we said carotenoids, then lipids functioning as vitamins or hormones, all these are complex or compound lipids. Simple lipid is the mono or di or triglycerides of glycerol with fatty acids, right. Foods generally contain any or all of these lipids. Our main interest is on fats that is acyl glycerides. Now, the acyl glycerols or triglycerides, acyl glycerols or triglycerides. Now, another new word has come up, I can skip right acyl, what does it mean right acyl. So, here it is with O and here with R and a here it could be any other thing. So, this could be uh, normally with the uh, methyl uh, with the uh, with the um, methyl group or any such substitute hydrocarbons right. So, then it is called acyl right. So, that acyl hydro uh, compounds are acyl glycerols or triglycerides are there phospholipids are also there. So, fat where all are triglycerides regardless of whether they are normally non liquid or liquid at room temperatures right. So, all fats are fat all triglycerides regardless of whether they are normally non liquid or liquid at room temperature they are fat. I said the other day the difference between fat and oil primarily is that 
that fat is solid at room temperature and oil is liquid at room temperature. This is by and large uh, general uh, classification or general distinction between the fat and oil. So, fats are solid at room temperature and, and now obviously, room temperature which one you call because room temperature cannot be uniformly same all over the world somewhere it is 20 degrees, somewhere it is 10 degrees, somewhere it is 30 degree, somewhere it is 0 depending on the location depending on the places. But by and large room temperature we call to be somewhere close to 20 right by all means it can be taken as. So, around 20 if they are solid then normally it is fat if they are liquid then normally it is it is oil right you will not see that even 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 in uh, very winter uh, the oil which you have bought from the market for uh, domestic preparation or domestic uh, consumption those oils do not get uh, solidified right those they don't get frozen right because their freezing point could be much much lower. So, that is why they are not solid at even very at even winter or low temperature right. Whereas, fat what we call to be the solid if they are somewhere at the high summer or, or peak summer could be going into the liquid phase because they can be melted at even at 40, 45 degrees centigrade they can be even melted. So, there and you if you take a little fat say 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 butter in, in your finger tip and keep it for some time you will see that it started melting because your body temperature is somewhere 37 degree plus minus 37 degree. So, uh, at that temperature this starts getting melted. This you can try may not be in winter because in winter your body temperature external not internal external may be may be somewhat low because of the surrounding temperature right. But even then if you keep for some time it, it will get the circulation blood circulation and the temperature will be automatically maintained and in that case they are also it, it may take some more time and it will be melted right. So, you have to be careful that which one to be fat which one to be oil those which are solid at room temperature are fats those which are liquid at room temperature are oil ok. So, we have no more time today. So, we will continue in the next class thank you.